Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to Kind of Funny Games. My name is Colin Moriarty. This is Nick Scarpino. Hello, Nick, yes. we're here to play one of my favorite games of the last few years. I'm digging it, man. It's a game. Oh, you see what I did you there? You beat me to it. Ah. It's a game called Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight came to Wii U 3DS and PC last year. That was 2014. Now it's available on PS3, PS4, PS Vita, and Xbox One. And you can get it in all those places you should play it as much as you possibly can. I really love this game. I thought we would jump in since you and I have kind of the old school uh, uh, love here. Love it. As a warp. Uh, so we'll create a character. Let's name him uh, Galvatron. Yeah. Uh, just for old time's sake. Uh, and then let's see here. Is there something you needed to say? Please no, say. I was going to say, I'm, I'm excited about this game too. This is one of those games where, just like Axiom Verge, where you sort of talked about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take Colin's advice and I'm going to play it. So I've been playing through Shovel Knight. It's a blast. This game is this game is fun. The, now the cool thing about this game, this game is by a studio called Yacht Club. Mm -hmm. uh, Odd name for and, a game studio. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, this is their first game. They kickstarted at when I was at IGN. I actually exclusively revealed the game to the world, and and uh, people really took to it. Um, some of the guys that are at Yacht Club used to work at Way Forward. Way Forward, of course, is known very well in the industry for making a lot of old school kind of games. Mm -hmm. the mo one of the most recent games they made, for instance, was DuckTales Remastered. Ah, right. Um, so there's a lot of good pedigree at that studio. These guys understand 8-bit games. They understand um, how to make them, how to, how to draw them, how to make it sound like an 8-bit game, how to make it feel like an 8-bit game. Mm -hmm. And so we're watching the intro right now. Um, poor Shovel Knight, um, living a life of solitude. Right. After his beloved Shield, Shield Knight, Knight. Uh, disappeared, and this is of course uh, the Order of No Quarter. So these are basically so the game is heavily inspired by Mega Man, but not only Mega Man, as we'll see. And this is really where it's inspired by Mega Man. Eight bosses mm -hmm. that are all knights, so not mm -hmm. men, but knights. Right. And they all have like a little special ability and stuff like that. And so Shovel Knight's about to go out um, into the world. This this intro reminds me a great deal of Mega Man 4's intro, or say uh, maybe a little bit of Castlevania 3's intro. Um, some cool stuff here. So we're gonna jump in, and before we get into the kind of the world map, we're gonna play the intro stage. You played this far, right? Well, uh, yeah, I'm about. I'm to the second world, so I played a little bit. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna rush through it. I'm used to. I just got the platinum trophy in the game, and so I'm used to just running through the game at this point. Right. I've beaten it like 25 times, like literally. Uh, so I'm now, gonna actually try to play it a little more organically here. Let me you. ask you a question. Did you repeat this level like over and over and over again to grind? Uh, uh, money? No, I like never tools. found. I, I gotta be honest with you. I never found the need to grind for money, oh, except. I did. If you're gonna get the fifty thousand gold at one time trophy, oh, you, you have to have that? fifty thousand gold in your in your at one time, and to do that mm -hmm. you have to be kind of thorough, um, especially because you lose it if you die. Yeah, that's the thing that kills me is that it's not just as easy as grabbing the jewels. Like I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I already have like you know five hundred gold coins or gold or jewels, whatever the currency is, um, and then you die and you have to go back and get it. Like it just pops out of your body. And you got to go back and get it. It adds an, an extra little, uh, little bit of depth to the game. It does, and I, and I would say that it even adds a little bit of ease to the game. I think that the, the one complaint I have with Shovel Knight, for as hard as people find the game, I don't think it's really that hard. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, especially by the standards of the games that it is inspired by. Um, is that I think that the game doesn't have quite as much consequence for dying. There's no lives. You lose your money, and if you don't get your money back, then that's that sucks. But yeah. there comes a time even when you don't need money anymore. So it's like because when you. Everything in the game probably costs forty or fifty thousand gold, maybe. You know, if you get all the total, armor. you're talking yeah, about total, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's kind of fun to level up, and it's kind of fun. It plays into that uh, part of your brain where you're like, I want the best armor right now. So, like when you uh, in the first stage, you get the ability to upgrade your life and your and your uh, magic, um, and then you know the second level, you're able to kind of upgrade your armor. But they're pretty smart about it, and that you can't just it's not. For uh, for the shovel, you have three upgrades, but for the armor, you can only pick one armor that right, you have well, at any given time. So you have to be a little strategic on how you play. And I play like a tank uh, rolling through Germany. Oh, so okay. I wanted the Good best. Reference. Uh, yeah, I wanted the best armor possible because I wanted to be able to sort of like take a lot of damage. And there's one specific uh, piece of armor that if you get hit by an enemy, won't knock you back. And that's the thing that pisses me off most about this game. It's the only thing that annoys me. The knockback is significant. It's significant. Um, and it's also part of the strategy, right? You have to kind of be careful with what you're doing. Um, but overall, what I was, what I find kind of fascinating about this is sort of the way you attack, right? Or with Mega Man, oh yeah, I shouldn't kill that guy. Yeah, um, with Mega Man, you sort of have that frontal attack where you've got, the, you've got the weapon that you're shooting out, but with Shovel Knight, you kind of have to attack from above. Like your actual forward uh, uh, shovel attack isn't very precise. You don't really get, you know, you, it, it's less for attacking, more for digging up things right. for, for the puzzle solving aspects of the game. Whereas when you kind of attack from above, that's where it becomes fun, and you get that little bounce effect, which is kind of a unique mechanic for me. Yeah, you don't and, see that too often. And that and that's where 
I want to get into kind of the inspirations for the game because the downward attack is so clearly inspired by Capcom's classic DuckTales, and that's and that's definitely where they got it from. The pogo attack. Right. Um, that is basically where everyone has seen this attack and really probably the only other place you'd ever see attack, an attack like that in a side-scrolling epic game. And that's what's so cool about this game and what, what I, when I, we were at IGN and I reviewed it and I, I called it my game of the year um, in 2014, the, one of the things I said about it which I thought was so intriguing was that it doesn't just willy-nilly take inspiration from other games. It takes inspiration from great games mm -hmm. and it ignores the shit that made those games oh, maybe... You gotta get that right there. What? Go down. What do you want me to get? Hit that bad boy. Hit that wall to your right. Oh okay. Oh, you want me to get this? You want me oh, to keep yeah. going? All right. Good. Did that bad. Sorry, I'm trying to. I'm trying to be. A, I'm trying to be thorough, but not like. Oh, you don't want to be spoilery. Well, no, not spoilery. It's just I don't want to. I mean, that's just you got to get that right. You want me to get that's treasure good stuff right there. So the the attack you know the attack Good mechanic gem. you get a projectile attack later on if you want it if you have full health it's very much like Zelda for instance. Mm -hmm. um, that's the one where you like charge and go. Yeah, and charge. Well, I don't find that uh, all that usable though. Well, this the is game. the one, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. I'm talking about the one where if you have full health and you shoot, it shoots a thing across the ground. Oh, no, I haven't gotten that so yet. So that's like very much like the, the Master Sword gotcha. from Zelda. Yeah. The pogo stick, obviously, the pogo attack, as we said, is from DuckTales. The mini bosses really could be from any sort of game. We'll just skip this guy. Um, yeah, and I like that. I like that mechanic, too. And this is where that, that hit back or that knockback gets pissed, you know. It gets really annoying with those little guys because they're, they're easy to destroy. But there are certain levels where you just die over and over and over again because right as you jump, they move to you and knock you back, and you're like, God. Yeah, they're aggressive, and this why? is where, and this is as we'll play, we'll play, you know, a couple more stages after this, so we can show people kind of more sure. of the, the boss stages, um, the proper night stages, as it were. Um, but this is where your your relics will come in. Relics are kind of your special weapons. Mm -hmm. Unlike Mega Man, um, in this game, you get basically. Um, relics that you find and buy on the different stages, and you don't have to use them. In fact, there's a trophy to get through the game without using them, and they're not really important. There's only two relics that I actually even ever use, um, which we'll we'll see one of them. I won't go in. I won't get too spoilery. We don't yeah. go too, too late in the game. But I'm curious as to which ones you are, because the first when you're talking relics, you're talking about the ones that use your magic to use. Right, exactly. Yeah. See, I find the first one I got, I use constantly. The the staff. Yeah. The which staff. We'll, which we'll find just, in it's super. It's, it's so. Makes the game a hell of a lot easier. Why didn't I there? So we'll, we'll find that in a King Knight stage gotcha. um, in yeah. a little while. But here we find uh, Black Knight, um, who's kind of like your persistent foil in the game. More like Black and Red Knight. You oh, know what I mean? yeah. Cool design. Very cool Dope design. design. He's a wuss, though. He he's, he's pretty easy to beat. Um, you fight him, you know, this won't be, the, I won't get into it too much, but this is not the only time you, uh, we'll just skip this. Oh, okay. Not the only time you fight him. And he has a little health, like a little cute little health meter here. Um, because it's, you know, he's not quite as strong as you'll find him later. Oop. So he does that little attack and you just knock him right out of it. He can block some of your projectiles, which is cool, we don't have any yet. You can actually knock those back into him if you oh, want. Oh, can you? Yep. I don't know. Um, so there's like definitely... Can you do that with a lot of projectiles in the game? Because there's a knight later on the thing that like throws it, her scythe at you. I like the... Oh, no, you can't, you can't, uh... Oh, oh I got Greg a uh, trophy. So I'm You're welcome, Greg. Game. See what we do for you? You do nothing. Yep, sure you did. For us. Mm -hmm. I've even... been a big fan of Ho dudes. Posers. Mm -hmm. So are now we're, we're basically do the introduction introductory sequence. This is really kind of taking a page more out of like Mega Man X, mm -hmm. where you it kind of gets you acclimated. After you beat every stage, you get this really cool scene where he sits at a campfire mm -hmm. and, and sometimes dreams. he goes into the dream. It's right, not every exactly. time. Sometimes he kind of just wakes up. But this is a, this is a a cool dreamscape of him kind of dreaming about uh, Shield Knight. And so, it, get, it gets progressively harder and harder. It's actually kind of like a bonus stage from like a, a Street Fighter, right? Where you're, it reminds me of like when you have to bust up the car mm -hmm. later in the world. You kind of, all these enemies start coming at you and you kind of, you kind of level up with your gems a little bit. Or not level up, but you can get more gems from it. So put the fire out, you gotta be responsible. And then we'll uh, get this open. Now, this is where the Mega Man inspiration doesn't come from. This is where the game gets more inspired by the likes of Mario. Mario, yeah. Um, so we're going to go to the hometown, and this is where the game takes another inspiration. This is where the game is inspired from uh, Zelda 2. This is where the game is inspired mm -hmm. by Thaxanadu. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the, the side-scrolling kind of towns where you're going to walk around. Look at this horse lady. Let's talk yeah, I don't know what she's lady. doing. Maiden, you meet that old witch down in the juice bar? I think she tells fortunes, but you won't talk to me. So there's only a few things of interest in here. You can... First of all, you want to talk to this guy at different times. This guy is a musician, and you'll find his music sheets. I found two of them already. He'll give you a 500 per music sheet, which is going to be good for and you. And he gets super stoked when you give them to him. Like, super stoked. And he'll actually play them for you, but don't do that because he takes forever. Um, so we can go down. And there's no journey. So this is where you're going to want to be to... Dope there's journey. You can talk to this woman and get more magic, um, and you can talk to this guy and use meal tickets to make more food. So we'll talk to this little ram guy down here, and we'll buy... 
um, his meal tickets. Now I find it fascinating, by the way, that he, you can keep leveling up your magic as long as you have enough gold for it, but the meal tickets, they start to limit as you go farther and right. farther into the game. Like you'll come back to him and you're like, oh, sorry, I'm out right now. And you're like, how can you be out? You got a book underneath your arm with them right there. I can see where it is. <laughs> You're just, you're, it's artificial supply and demand. You're, just art, you're limiting it. I don't like this. And one of the things I like about the gastronomer here, who's the guy who cooks for you, is his animations are really Oh, cool. this is dope, yeah. I like so, this. like, well, he'll he'll cook us something, and I think this is actually really like kind of neat. I love that. I like that style. It's got, it's, it's got a very, the whole game has sort of a tongue in cheek humor to it, obviously, because you're, you're a knight with a shovel. Um, did you just buy two of them? I bought two of them, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. I didn't that. Um, you don't want to go get anything else. Really we don't coming. need anything else. I don't have much money right now, and, oh, and okay. I, I want to see if I can get this trophy. This is a, I'll get this one for Greg if I can get it. I already have that one. You did? Yeah. No, you How don't. How many have times it. you have to do it? You have to stay on it for five seconds. Oh. Another little secret is if you can get this woman over here. I just need her a little bit over more. Yeah, oh, that's how you get up there. You can do this and get the yeah. chest up here. Smart cookie. I could not figure out how to do that. And then we'll get the money. We'll get the music sheet, and we'll go back to the world map. Now. We'll do two stages here. We can actually go in multiple directions. We can either go down to uh, fight Spectre Knight or we can go fight King Knight. And I, I actually, King Knight's the easiest boss in the yeah. game, but I also like his stage a lot. Um, very cool, a lot of cool parallax scrolling and stuff. You can see it like right, you know, right in the beginning. Look at that. It's like so cool, mm. the, the different layers. So we'll fight King Knight here. And so how far have you gotten into the game? You I'm, said you were two uh, stages in? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the next the next map over. So you're on, uh, you're, you're fighting Spectre Knight. Right? Yeah, I'm just, I think. I think I already beat Spectre Knight. Uh, I'm kind of, I think I beat both of the, the cast, or the, both the knights in that stage, and I'm trying to get past the uh, the bonus stage. Oh, okay. Where you get the dash move, mm -hmm. which is a, impossible. I just can't do it. So I might just give up on that. I'm not into like platinuming like you are. I'm cool if I'm just like silvering, you know what I mean? Silvering, yeah. No, or just like. It's definitely a couple steps down. Or just down, like plasticking, you know? Right, right, right. right. If that's the thing, that's the thing, right? I understand completely. So we'll kind of keep going here. So I don't know, man. I, I I really I really have taken a great deal of this game. I think this game is just phenomenal. I mean, it, it, it and I can see why you'd like it, right? You start playing it. it the control's great, first of all. Uh, it doesn't feel clunky at all. Um, it's got all those things that you love. Now, this is an interesting note. Should we spoil this? What do you want? What do you, in terms of what? As far as those save uh, crystals. Oh, that you can destroy them? Yes. So yeah, here you can destroy them. You get a great a, a lot of gold from it, but here's the deal. That's a save point that you just destroyed. So as I learned the hard way with this specific level, I was like, oh, I'll just destroy all these. It's totally fine. But when you die, you, you go, go all, all the way back to the beginning and you don't have any more save points for this level, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah, they're, they're destroyed permanently. They're permanently. And again, there's a, a trophy called Checkpointless um, to, that makes you destroy all of the checkpoints. It's, um, I would not recommend for your, that for your first uh, playthrough. And the cool thing about this game, too, is that there's a proper New Game Plus. So if you beat the game, you can start New Game Plus, which makes all the enemies twice as strong. Oh, that's cool. Um, now, what's cool about it is that... You don't need this. You don't think so? I, I kind of want to get it. You want to get it? Yeah. All right. I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I just like watching him... Oh, I'm not there yet. You gotta there get it. Yeah, you got to put it right in the hole. You can't be off a but it also hurts. Um, we're going to show you the first relic here. I forgot what I was saying before, but it doesn't matter. So we'll find our little friend here that's going to sell us relics. And this dude's everywhere. He's like the His Tim Gettys of this game. He's just all trying to scheme and sell you shit. So we'll buy the staff. This is what you're talking about. This is kind of uh, the flare wand. Arguably, maybe with the exception of uh, Treasure Knight's weapon, the most useful weapon in the entire game, in my opinion. But as you read online, you'll find that a lot of people have different preferences for a lot of the weapons they use. I love this. There's a phase weapon to use, for instance, I think it's invis you know, invisible for I, a while. Yeah, that, you know, the problem with that, it, it, to me, though, is that it takes too long to activate. So, like, you gotta, oh, not this other thing. Um, it's cool, and on certain stages it comes in really, really handy. But uh, overall, this is just kind of my go-to right now, especially to beat guys like that, because it's nice to have a projectile. Yeah, and for, for people that want to see it, I mean, that's what it is. That's, what it that's right, basically yeah. it. We'll dig this up. Now this is when we're gonna we're gonna get to see another little. He's not really a mini boss, but he's one of the more impressive like sprite characters in the game. We'll jump this over and wait. And then, so you're much more efficient with that forward attack than I am. I gotta come from the sky. Like the like the like what? I don't know. Tell me. Like a like a flying rat. You know like a flying mean? rat with a propeller. Yeah. Now one of the problems I have with the game, and I'm curious if you if you've experienced enough of it to really feel this way is that I feel like there is a, a lack of enemy diversity in the game. For instance, the the uh, the wizard creature we just killed before, yeah. they're basically just re there's basically just pilot swaps of them all over the place on every stage. Um, I haven't I haven't it, that hasn't occurred to me yet in the game. Um, 
I think really to me it's more about like sort of the complexity of the gameplay than it was about those, those guys. Like a lot of the enemies don't, I don't know, I, think, I, I would disagree. I think there's a pretty varying degree of them, but I think it's just overall the thing that captures me so much is this actual smart design of the game. Like I love this, I love this stage, right? The, it, it's got a nice mix of, oh my God, I wanna throw my controller across the room and oh wow, I just got that, that's awesome, I didn't think I could. You're about to die. Oh, oh, you got it, good. And some of the bosses, like, it, it, there is a little bit of escalation with, with the knights, I've noticed. Like, the first couple are super easy, and then the next one you get to is, like, really hard. Yeah, that's the like, one. What the hell? That's the one thing I would have liked a little bit more um, in the game, is I appreciate the Mario 3 inspiration of having, like, a map that you kind of go around. Mm -hmm. And it's semi non linear in the fact that you can. There's a point where you can be two bosses in any order, and then three bosses in any order, and then right. three bosses in any order. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you want to make it easier on yourself, you could literally just play the first stage over and over and over again and level up so you, so you get all the, you know. Your life is like twice as much. You got 100% uh, magic, and then you can go out to these bosses if you want. There might be a little bit of varying degree for that, but you know what I mean. You can make it a lot easier on yourself if you want, or you can just progress quickly through the game, which I think is cool. This guy goes up the gun. Nah. Come on. Fanfare. So, King Knight's done. We'll do one more stage after this. Um, and. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the Mario 3 inspiration of having this map to go to and like kind of enemies that are get harder and harder. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, I like the Mega Man thing too, where you kind of don't know where to go. And all the bosses are kind of the same. It's just you need to figure out a way to get in yeah. and go around the circle. But they're not trying to like totally eat no, Mega no, Man no, no. either. I mean, which you're I not getting those powers that is required to beat each night, right? Like you could probably, like you said, speed run through this without getting a lot of the upgrades. Um, and still be able to beat the game just based on, on, on skill alone, which is I find is cool. Um, for me, it's one of those things where I, I, I started playing this and I'm like, all right, I'm only gonna, Colin said this is a four hour game, I'm only gonna play this for four hours. I'm not gonna try to do everything. I'm not gonna try right. to get every relic. I'm not gonna try to you know, upgrade my, my knight to the point where he's like a freaking panzer tank uh, fighting the Americans in World War II. But I'm like eight you're, hours. You're into the tank? I really no, am. So I like it. I I'm, but I'm like eight hours in now. Like I've played this game for so long because there's that little guy that will tell you how long you've died and how yeah, long you've played for, and I've been playing this game way longer than I thought. Mostly because I started, I'm like, this is really enjoyable, and I just kind of want to take my time with it. Um, that's it. <laughs> and I want to see what all, you know. I want to see everything it has to offer. Damn, you are just you play this a lot. I can tell. Yeah, I played the game. You're a hell of a lot more proficient with this than I am. I've played the game one one times or two times. And it's a great game, man. I mean, it's just, I'm just so satisfied with it. And I, I hope that um, people out there are really enjoying it too. Because I, I think I think it's, um, there's something special about this game. You know, like, I, I'm not just saying because I like 8-bit games. Like, there's something special in the heart and soul of this game that I think, there's a lot of, you know, replicas out there. There's a lot of games that are inspired um, by, you know, old games. But to me, it's, there's something in the heart and soul of this game that's more than that. And I, I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hope that, I th it seems to me, based on the ridiculous amount of sales I think this game has sold, that um, other people out there get it as well. So, that I take heart in that. I would agree. I mean, you, you can just watch the gameplay and know that this is something that you want to interact with, right? If you're into this kind of game, it's no brainer. Get it. You're gonna love it. Look at you. It's like, you're like the blind samurai. You can just play this blindfolded. You See what I did there, Kevin? See what I did there? A little secret here. Let's see if we go down here. Let's oh, see damn. See, you know all this jam. Uh, Look at you. Look at the brain on you. Oh, you crushed that. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Damn. That guy just killed himself. Yeah, well, he's an idiot. He has no head either, so. He lost his head. That's not the way to get a head in life. Uh, How do you get up there? Um, I'll show you. I have not figured that one out yet. Oh, smart. Look at you. This is really scary. I, don't, I will say this is my least favorite mechanic in the game, when it just they turn all the lights out on you. Yeah, it's scary. It's definitely scary. Yep. Damn it. That. Um, oh, but yeah, that's, that's how you get up there. That. There's there's some pretty clever uh, puzzles, I think, in the game. Um, so we're really back where we were, which really is no big deal. I like how there's just conveniently a bomb there for us to use. Nice. So let's continue no on our way. This is where we were, so it really doesn't matter. 
Um, yeah, let's go. I want, I, want to, I want to show everyone the boss. Yeah, the, I, the, I actually think cool this is one too. of the cooler bosses in the game. Yeah, there's a little cool kind of puzzle mechanic here with these guys and their helmets. Um, and you have to use to like either make weight or lose weight depending right. on how you want to play it. It's just like when we used to wrestle in, in college, right? Exactly yeah, right. Ready to make so weight. So we're going up. You had to make weight. You had to. And then you had to I was weight. friends with a lot of uh, wrestlers uh, in they high would, school. Yeah, you told me they would just be spitting constantly. Actually made it on the one jump there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm so used to not making it. Yeah, so I think this mechanic, this like lightning mechanic, is fucking awesome. It's, it, it gets really, it really gets complicated from, later. Yeah. Like not even on the stage, but in like when you're fighting, like in the boss stages later, it gets like pretty, ha pretty heinous. Um, but it's fun. It's definitely a unique kind of thing. So we're, we're we're cruising our way down and over. Get over here. We'll use this real quick to heal ourselves a little more. Get a little, get, get, eat some turkey. We don't need some it, protein. But. See, even in this game, you need protein, Kevin. Even in gaming. Kevin, you're not getting enough protein? I didn't know that. He doesn't get enough protein in his diet. Did you know about the secret? Oh, shit. Oh, I did find that one, actually. I like that one. Yeah, that was Great Mario like. Oh, shit. No! Look at you. Look at the brain on you. Wow. Well, wah. we're almost there. Now, I played this. <laughs> I was looking at. I have like five different save files on my Vita. Mm -hmm. Man, I played so much of this game in the last week. It's like not even funny. Um, shit. Yeah, you that's almost, the, See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That knockback. Yeah, the knockback's bad. Now, you use the armor that you get access to that, that eliminates the knockback for you? Yes. Because um, I I actually use the armor, I guess I was using it for more practical reasons with the red armor that oh. eliminates the money that you lose yeah. or like lowers the amount of money you lose. That is probably better for me because I tend to die a lot. Just because I'm a little bit more gung-ho with. Oh, look at you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There was that, well originally I bought the gold armor because I was like, I want to look amazing. Yeah, there's like you no know. reason, it's like but it's just an aesthetic. But it says in the description there's no point to this. But you flip. When you, and you have a little, uh, have, you, have you bought it yet? Oh uh, yeah, I bought it. Yeah, you, you flip and you get little like sparkles behind you. So you like that? Oh, I love You're it. That. But then I immediately shut the game off and restarted it because I was like, ah, that was a waste of $9,000. Screw it. So here's where things get a little more complicated with the... Um... Reset it. Bought the real armor. With the, uh, the light mechanic. You gotta use that freaking that dirty wand, bro. Ooh, damn, that just made my heart skip a beat. All right, so we're almost at the boss. We'll go in here, get the meat, go through the checkpoint. So people actually think this is a difficult game? Like how, like, you, you took... There's a lot of people that are saying that it's like, it's really, really having a hard time with it. I can't quite relate to that. But I think it's because I play a lot of these kinds of games. I'm also, I think, really good at Shovel Knight by now. Yeah. There are people certainly that are better than me, than me but... Um, it's definitely not as hard as the games that inspired it. That's kind of the thing that I've been saying to people, like... Yeah, I feel like so. I had a, I had a, a difficult part with this boss, but I think it's one of those things where after you know you play ten times, you figure out the timing of it and you're ready to rock and roll. Oh, it's for not sure. A big deal. Um, but I would say overall, how I found the game is it's about ninety percent really easy and fun, and just kind of interesting to to navigate the world and, and puzzle solve, and then ten percent unbelievably hard, where you're like, I want to throw my controller across the room, destroy it, stomp on it, and make sure it knows who's boss, and then you beat the boss, and you're like, Oh, I get it now. I get it. Yeah, there's definitely something satisfying about understanding the game. Yeah. And then he turns it dark if you wake if, if He actually won't even get to this point if you kill him quickly enough. But So that's the end of Spectre Knight. So we, we did the intro sequence, Nick, and then we did King Knight and Spectre mm -hmm. Knight. There are six more knights to fight, a bunch of mini-bosses to fight that are like roaming enemies. Again, yeah, Very inspired too. by the Hammer Brothers in Mario. And then you go into kind of a, a last sequence, very Wily Castle-esque thing. So um, I think people are really going to enjoy the game. I highly recommend it. Uh, we'll get a meal ticket out of this treasure chest, by the way. Yeah, we will. Uh, but this is another one of those dream sequences we were talking about. But I think that was a good place to wrap it up. Yep. Uh, Nick, thank you for joining me. Thanks this is Shovel me. Knight. Again, you can buy Shovel Knight on PC, Wii U, 3DS, Xbox One, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4. You have your choice. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Let us know what you think. And get we it, hope you enjoyed uh, this video uh, of uh, Shovel Knight. Get and by the way, in case you guys up. are curious, uh, this is a great place to harvest money, these dream sequences. Um, and as far as I can tell, there's no real reason to save save Shield Knight. I don't think you lose anything. You don't get from, a trophy for it. Uh, I, I just assume you got a trophy if you save her every single time. No, there's no. There, I, there might be like more monetary gain, but like you can let her go. But I'm gonna save her. There we go. Yeah, you did.
Look at you. Um, all right. I can't let a good girl fall down. So that is Shovel Knight. This is Kind of Funny Games. We hope to see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Au revoir.